What memory makes you cringe every time you think back on it? Story one. It has to be the love note I wrote to the girl I had a crush on when I was 13 in middle school. It was so embarrassingly cringe-worthy with excerpts like, You are an angel floating down from heaven, or beauty like the rising sun, or I'm floating on a cloud of love. Then I signed it anonymously by putting my locker number instead of my name. My locker was right next to hers. It's not like it was hiding my identity at all. I thought I was being so clever, so I slipped it in her locker and waited. When she found it, she shared it with all of her friends who stood in the front of the classroom, passing it around, giggling their asses off and staring straight at me. About a week later, I got a note in my locker saying, Sorry, my mom says I'm not allowed to date until I'm older. I still can't believe I thought it was such a good idea. I cringe every time I think about it. Story 2 after a school production of a play, everyone in the cast and crew were saying thank yous to all the people that made it happen. I thank the lead's parents for having such a beautiful daughter. In front of a packed house, I had a crush on her. I'm such a loser. It was 16 years ago and I still hate myself when I think of it. Edit. I think it's great how a lot of you are all thinking how smooth, heroic, fonzy this is, but in reality, this was hyper embarrassing. The girl, she just looked at me like I had ruined her high school career. The cast and crew collectively cringed against me. It was so bad and so unsmooth that I've blocked a lot of it out save for the initial memory. Her name, I think, Sarah, but unsure. And the week after. I just don't know. Edit 2. Glad you can all share my pain, and I loved reading all your anecdotes. Thanks for the upvotes, and thanks for making my cringe a little more bearable. Misery loves company, I suppose. Story 3. I grew up in the bush and spent my time running around having adventures and climbing trees with my best friend. We were dorky, socially clueless hippie kids. When I was 13, my mom moved us off the commune and into town. Me and my friend grew apart and eventually stopped seeing each other at all. A couple of years later, when I was 15 or so, my mate came to visit us in our house in the city. I have this vivid memory of standing in front of my wardrobe, putting on a silk paisley shirt and saying, I think we've grown apart. I'm asterisk funky asterisk now, I was such a shower. He was such an awesome dude. I wish I knew where he was, now so I could apologize, and show him how not funky and generally retarded I am. Story 4. When I was younger, probably around 12, my mom used to take me and my sister swimming to the local pool. One day, when we arrived, my mom met up with some of her friends, which included a younger lady, about 25. They were all gasbagging about something or other, and I just wanted to go and swim, so my mom told me to ask Amy, the 25-year-old relatively attractive friend, if I could go and swim with her. I walked up to her and asked, Mom told me to ask if it was okay if you will sleep with me. She looked a combination of shocked and amused, and I then realized my mistake, so I tried to correct myself with, Sorry, I really want to go and sleep with you. She was confused. We went to my mom and Amy told her what I had said. All of the women in the group had a jolly good laugh at my expense, and people then decided I obviously had a thing for Amy. I often wonder if Amy remembers that or was as embarrassed as I was. Story 5. When I was a young girl at around age 11, I shared a room with my sister, three years younger than me. One night, my grandmother came to stay over for the night. My sister slept with my mom in her bed, and my grandmother slept in my sister's bed, sharing the room with me. Well, that was the night I decided to figure out why my ball sometimes got hard. So I lifted up my nightshirt and let the cool air blow on my peckers. I wasn't satisfied, so I started to stimulate them with my fingers. Then I heard some faint rustling coming from where my grandmother was sleeping, so I quietly pulled my shirt back down and went to sleep. The next day, my grandmother didn't really talk to me and seemed to avoid eye contact. I think she was awake and saw what I did. I then secretly waited for her to pass on so I wouldn't have to deal with the awkwardness anymore. She passed away when I was 13. I still cringe hardcore, not cool. Story 6. When I was a wee lad of about four or five, I remember going to a family reunion. There was a pool there so that all I cared about. I went inside to change into my swimsuit, but all my mom had brought for me was my yellow Snoopy swimsuit that was like a Speedo. Even at four, five, I knew that this thing was weird, but fudge it. I wanted to swim. So I put them on and went outside. I'm not sure on the details of exactly how or why it happened, but all of the sudden my banana popped out of the swimsuit while I was standing in front of a group of my aunt's older cousins. They were all commenting on how adorable my swimsuit was when it just came out. They started laughing their asses off, and I was so embarrassed that I went back to the room, I changed in and cried for the rest of the reunion. It was awful, and I was very upset at my mom for not bringing my regular swimsuit. Sad times. Story 7. I had a humongous crush on an older boy when I was 13, 16. 
I can see now that he just wasn't interested in me. But every couple of months he'd give me a reason to think he was. He'd call me up and get me to meet him, tell me he loved me, but he was worried about the age gap, etc. Then he'd disappear for months, with no contact whatsoever. Anyway, I used to text him at least a couple of times per day, every single day, without fail, telling him what I'd been up to. At least once a week I'd send him an accidental text meant for a friend, usually talking about something provocative, or just about how much I missed hearing from him. This pattern carried on for a good couple of years. So yes, essentially I was desperate and shameless enough to send him hundreds, probably thousands, of unreplied to texts. Edit. Yes, I know it was utterly embarrassing slash creepy slash stalker behavior, but in my defense I was only 13 when we met, whilst he was 17. And at no point in the three years did he ever ask me not to contact him anymore. I like to think that if he had done, I would have... But not going to lie, I was 13 and besotted. I can't be certain. Story 8. In the seventh grade, around the time puberty began for me, I caught a full-on boner. This wasn't the first time it happened, but this time I had somehow convinced myself that it was all in my head. So with a fully erect 13-year-old banana, I walked to the front of the class to get some tissue for my runny nose, displaying my boner for the entire class to see. When I looked back, the class was, for lack of a better word, shocked. I finally realized the mistake I made when I sat back down and my friend slowly turned to me, and with the most WTF tone, he had said, Dude, every time I remember this moment, I hang my head in shame. Story 9. My junior prom. I weighed 200 LBs and only had one friend. We decided to go together as two single ladies and just have fun. Well, I got to her house where we were going to get ready, and she had two guys that she had begged to be our dates there. They were both about 30, gross, and dressed inappropriately for a prom. They had packs of Marlboro cigarettes visible in their front pockets, and both sported mullets. They were also both married. I thought she was joking. She wasn't. She really wanted to do go with these two rednecks because to her, it was better than going stag. So I gritted my teeth and did it for the sake of friendship. I cringed every single time someone took a picture. I'm 35, and I'm still cringing now. That night was nothing but a painful world of cringe. Story 10. Me and my family are African American. We lived in an all-white neighborhood when I was about 15. That being said, all of my friends were white, and we had a lot of awkward moments. I never ran into any racism, but I did run into stereotypes and things like that. One day, I'm at a buddy's house, and he pulls this hot sauce named Spontaneous Combustion from his refrigerator that's inside of a large prescription pill, like bottle, so as to keep it away from children. He dares me to put some on my finger and lick it off, and of course, I'm not going to back down, so I do it. It was the hottest thing I have ever put in my mouth. It took like an hour for the burn to go away. We go into his room and start playing Super Smash Bros, and I completely forget about washing my hands. I get up and go into the kitchen to get a drink, and his mom is sitting at the kitchen table reading. Right before I open the fridge door, I rub my eyes, and all hell breaks loose. I'm screaming and jumping up and down from the pain of my eyes, feeling like they are being burned out of my skull. His mom never moves from the table. My buddy hears my screams of death from his room and comes sprinting into the kitchen. Between my cries of pain, I tell him what just happened. He yells at his mom, asking why didn't she get up to help, and she yells back, I thought he was rapping. Story 11. This one's actually quite recent. I was getting ready to go to a party and decided to take the edge off before I go. I'd have a bowl. I sat down for a little while and ended up having five. Finally, I was ready to go, so I waited out the front of my apartment for my friend to pick me up. It was fairly dark, keep in mind. I see a car coming into the driveway and automatically assume it's my friend Tyler. I run toward the car and open the door, plonk myself on the seat and shut the door, doing so, saying, I'm so flipping high right now. I then proceed to turn around to whom I thought was Tyler to find the big Lebo dude who lives next door, whom I've never spoken to, sitting in the driver's seat. What's worse is that I was so shocked at what I'd done I didn't apologize or say anything, but slowly stared at him as I got out of the car. He watched me carefully, me still not saying anything, locked his car doors and drove off. The worst. Story 12. I saw Asterisk the Addams Family Asterisk movie when I was about seven years old. I've always had a really morbid sense of humor and basically thought I was Wednesday Addams. At some point in the movie, the family decides to run through the cemetery on their property to play Wake the Dead. My dad had a best friend that terminated himself before I was born. He didn't tell me that he terminated himself, of course. For years, he told me it was an accident while he was cleaning his gun. One day, 
My mom told me we were all going to the cemetery to plant flowers on her parents' graves. I asked my dad if his friend Robin was buried there, too. He said he was. I suggested it would be a great idea to go play Wake the Dead and find out if Robin would come back as a zombie. I have never seen my dad look so hurt. He was absolutely forlorn and disappointed. It was the first time he ever raised his voice to me, and I knew I messed up up really badly. I felt like such a piece of cow. I was a daddy's girl and he was disappointed in me. It took days for him to act normal to me again. For years, when I couldn't sleep, this was all I could think about. Edit. Just for clarity, he said something like, You don't say things like that. I can't believe you would say that. It hurt my feelings really badly. He didn't smack me or anything. It was just the first time I ever remember doing something to let him down. It was more the look on his face that made me realize how badly I messed up up. Also, I knew his friend was dead because I liked him to tell me random anecdotes as bedtime stories. So I would ask him to tell me stories about when he was younger. And then, of course, I asked why I never met Robin. So he had to tell me he passed away. After this incident, it wasn't that he didn't speak to me at all for days. He just acted kind of distant. He still hugged me and kissed me on the forehead and stuff. At some point, maybe after about two days, he sat me down and explained that there are things you don't want to joke about because you can really hurt people's feelings. It was back to normal after that. I just had have anxiety, and when I can't sleep, I tend to think of all the things I've said and done wrong. Story 13. Fly with me, friends, back to the time of fourth grade. Now, I'm not sure if I was supposed to know male-specific anatomical terminology back then, but I didn't. So when I heard a friend use the word testicle, I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I recall my nine-year-old mind finding great humor in what it interpreted as a butchering of the word tentacle. So naturally, I did what every impressionable fourth grader would have likely done, and started injecting the word into every sentence I could, or generating nonsensical, standalone sentences to describe mundane situations. Well, eventually, I spill this around an authority figure, and she flips out. But I have no idea why, so I write a letter to my fourth grade teacher inquiring as to what's wrong with the word testicle, and explaining that I thought it was a funny word, but that someone yelled at me for using it. Well, she must have called home because that night Dad explained to me what testicles are, and I about wanted to pass away. TLDR. Fourth grade was nuts. Story 14. I was a very sheltered child. When I was 14, I started working with a neighbor of mine during the summer renovating houses. One of the houses I was at had teenage girls there, and although I didn't realize it until I was 25, I was fairly attractive even at that age, and also could pull a bathroom apart and put it back together, which is apparently a turn-on for some females. Well, I was acting all professional and such, and was ignoring what was actually some pretty heavy advances from these girls when I was left alone to work for periods of time, but I was oblivious to it at the time. Eventually, the girl's frustration at me got the better of them, and one of them asked if I was boy. Well, sheltered, Christian family, completely unexposed to the world me, doesn't even know what boy is, parents didn't let us watch TV, homeschooled, no friends, etc., and I thought they meant the archaic definition of the word, full of joy or mirth. Yeah, I don't even think I have to finish this, and I remember this almost daily, even at age 27. I've told no one of this up to now. Story 15. I was at a bar a few years ago with some buddies and a group of people were at the table next to us. Me and this girl locked eyes for a brief second and she grinned. I didn't really think anything of it. A few beers later, she and a friend go to the dance floor. And after a minute, she looks at me and motions for me to come join her. I immediately think back to when we locked eyes and thought, Cool, I like aggressive chicks. She has her back to me as I walk up and start dancing on her, and as she feels me grinding, she whips around in horror and jumps back. She said, uh, I was motioning for my boyfriend to come dance. I turn around to see her boyfriend giving me the stank eye, two feet behind me. All I could do was mutter an apology and walk away ashamed. Worst part, my friends saw the whole thing, and I have to go pack to a table of four other guys, their pants with laughter. Took a while to love that down, but I'll never forget the cringe of that moment. I'm an idiot. T.L. Daughter. Danced with a girl who didn't want me dancing with her, her boyfriend didn't like, I got laughed at. Story 16. Worst moment ever, and it lasted a long time. I was driving and had my brother and a friend in the car. I'm in the turn lane waiting to go left. The light turns yellow, so I start to turn. This a-hole decides to blow through without stopping, swerving around me. I honk. Next guy does the same thing. Now I'm pissed and lay on my horn. The third car in a row keeps going through the red. This is when my brother informs me, dude, that's a funeral. 
Turns out I'm the unpleasant person. I had to sit there as at least another thirty. Forty cars went by, totally obstructing their way. And I couldn't even back up as there were cars behind me. I always cringe when I think of the looks I got from drivers as they passed me. Story 17. I was fifteen wires old and big into paintball. Asked my dad if I could go out in the yard with my brother and shoot around. His initial response was no, but due to my constant complaining, he gave in. After a while, my brother's gun jammed, so I try to fix it. Done this one hundreds of times. Got lazy with safety and forgot to discharge the last bit of air after I took the tank off. So, with my goggles off, I proceed to fix the gun so well that the jammed paintball was fired at my right eye at 300 FPS. Multiple surgeries later, I still have almost no vision in that eye. Think about it every day, I'm 27 now, and every time I do, it makes me sick. Story 18, I'm a server for this really nice Italian restaurant in town. People come here to have nice dates, you know, wine and dine. Well, this one time a customer at the table told me a joke as I was presenting their entrees that was just a little funny. So I didn't laugh out loud with my head thrown back, but instead kind of nose laughed. A smirk with sound. I wish every day I would have laughed like a normal person, because on this particular night, my nose laugh launched the greasiest and most sticky booger ever created right into the middle of this couple. This booger was so large and traveling at such a velocity, it literally was audible to everyone as it smacked the table. Mortified, I scooped it up off the table and just ran away. I didn't even come back to the table the rest of the night. I am also currently cringing. Story 19. My uncle and his wife married when I was about nine. I had lots of little cousins and assumed I'd have another in a year or two. Almost two year passed with no pregnancy. So I asked if I was going to have another cousin soon, and they said, not yet. I kept asking every time I saw them until I realized they probably were going to wait a really long time before giving me another cousin. They had two children in the past five years and revealed they had been dealing with infertility. I can't imagine how much pain I put them through and how much they probably dreaded any visits where they knew I'd be there. Not only that, but I know now firsthand how annoying it is to have people assume that because you're married, you're going to pop out babies ASAP. I need to sit down with them, confess I remember doing this, and apologize. Story 20. I forgot my mother's birthday. Now, before you say they a lot of people do that, understand that my mom and I are very close. She's my best friend, and I am a douchebag daughter. Three weeks prior to her birthday, she informed me that my stepdad was taking us all out for hibachi for my mom's birthday. She gave me a time to be there, and I told her I would. It's hibachi. I'm always up for hibachi. I made a mental plan for a gift to get her and filed that away in my useless brain. Fast forward to her birthday. I get a call around 7 p.m. Mom, hey, what's up? You on your way? Me, ha, on my way where? I'm at Paul's watching movies, ma. Mom, um, Ichiban? Hibachi dinner dot 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 IT, quote, S the 26th. Me, sudden realization. Oh, 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 it's your birthday. Oh, my God, I, I literally forgot. Oh, God, why did I say that out loud? Mom, oh, um, okay. Well, if you hurry, you can get here before dinner. Me, worst moment of my daughter career. Well, Ma, the movie just started. You're cool if I just stay here? The rest of the conversation isn't important. All you need to know is that I have never heard sadness and disappointment with such magnitude in silence before that moment, and I have never heard it since. You could almost feel her heart breaking. I am her youngest and her only girl, and that was the worst moment ever. Now, every year on her birthday, I am reminded of what a cow kid I am. She tells me she doesn't even remember. I do all the time. Edit. Thanks, everyone. If she does remember, knowing that she possibly forgave me is helpful. I still apologize every year, lol. Story 21. When I was a freshman in high school, before I'd really socially bloomed. In other words, I quietly sat in my desk, drawing weird pictures and avoiding eye contact, hoping to not be noticed. I dropped my pencil in Spanish class. I tried to subtly reach down and get it, but I reached too far, and my whole desk fell over with me in it. I landed practically on top of a well-liked junior sitting next to me, naturally gaining the attention of everyone in the room. Oh, the silence of the class. I can laugh at it now, but a little part of me will always feel the pain of embarrassment when I think back. Story 22? Damn it! I always miss these threads when I have a good story. I'll slide it in anyway, and maybe someone will enjoy it. I definitely did not. I was about six or seven, and I was playing in a friend's house. We were pretending to have boyfriends and have close relationship. Of course, back then, we thought close relationship was getting and just lying in bed. So there we both are in our underwear, 
lying in her bed pretending to make babies with our imaginary boyfriends, and my friend's dad walks in. We cover ourselves with the duvet and he goes downstairs. I remember thinking maybe he didn't know we were... That glimmer of hope disappeared when we could hear my friend's sister laughing hysterically downstairs as she shouts up, Put your clothes back on and come eat some dinner. Story 23. I was, am a fairly classic nerd. I mostly bombed every time I tried to take a girl on a date, but one date in particular still makes me cringe when I think about it. My high school in particular served as a gifted student center for the best students in the public system across the county. The great part about the gifted program was that I was mostly surrounded by peers who were equally nerdy. During senior year, I was a bit late to the game. I finally developed enough courage to ask out a girl who I really thought was the prettiest and in the top few smartest girls I knew. Inexplicably, she seemed to actually be excited to go with me to dinner and a movie. I picked her up around 7.30 p.m. The plan was to go to an evening movie and then dinner after. It was late fall, and by 7.30 p.m. the sun had already set, and it was getting pretty dark outside. I should have worn my glasses, but my vision was not terrible, and I thought I looked so much cooler without them. Retard. So I'm driving out of her neighborhood, unfamiliar with the roads, and I end up on the wrong side of a median driving into oncoming traffic. 25 miles per hour speed limit, only 50 yards, and I'm clear. All I have to do, finish my turn and go on with my night. It's not a big deal, right? Yep. No problem, I got out of it just fine. And nope. My shower bag brain locks in on the mistake and fixates on it for the next several hours. I become a complete zombie. I can't utter a word. I'm mortified at my stupidity. I normally have a pretty clear memory, especially when it comes to visual things like movies. I don't have a clue what movie I sat and cold-sweated my way through because my brain could not do anything but relive the ten-second screw-up in the car. My date tried to assure me that it was not a big deal. She tried to grab my hand and shake me out of my state of shock. Nothing pulled me out of it. The movie ended dinner time? Oh, hell no. Neither of us even mentioned it. We went to the car and without even thinking I drove her home and sent her inside. I was too embarrassed to talk to her for the next month. The worst part was that I not only screwed up the date, but alienated someone that I considered a friend. I have no idea what she must have thought of me. Probably nothing at all after that date. Maybe she just felt relieved that she found out I was such a flipping spaz early on in the relationship. Anyways, I never really talked to her again. I left for college and we went our own way. However, I did go back home to visit probably about eight years after the date. I went out with my family and I saw her at a restaurant. She was drop-dead beautiful, sitting with her husband and fairly young baby. I was not even able to go say hi. I just cringed and thought about what might have been. Story 24. I had a student job where I sat in computer labs and answered questions. One day I was assigned to a classroom and usually my job was just to sit there and be quiet. Almost noon ever asked a question because they were in the middle of a class. Well, I'm getting bored, so I stick my headphones in and watch a funny video. Weird, it doesn't sound right, it's quiet and muffled. I'll try to turn it up some more. Nope, turn it up all the way. It ended, hey, that was really funny, I'm going to watch it again. Ha ha, that was great. This is when I look up to notice everyone staring at me. What's going on? Oh cow, my headphones aren't plugged in. Ugh, even now I hate myself when I think about it. Story 25, I posted this one a few months back, but here goes. When I was in kindergarten, I told everyone that this girl was my girlfriend. I told them that because during nap time, I would lay my mat next to hers and we'd have a good nap. A real one read it, a real nap. One day we were sitting in story time and I was laying down the mat particularly hard. I would slowly but surely slide my hand closer to hers. I came within an inch of her hand when I had one of those sudden OMFG, I have to pee right now moments. Now in Mrs. Crook's kindergarten class, we had a rule where we had to put up fingers if we needed something. One finger was a question, two was the bathroom, and three was, I'm dying, save me. So I stick my two little fingers up into the air, and I waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, Omji um, waited so long it was like an hour was go nadie. Until finally, the two little fingers came back down. I could feel the warm, soothing feeling of utter humiliation running out my pants and pooling in between my crossed Indian-style legs. Thinking if I could just spread my legs wider, I could cover the puddle. I started shifting, but to no avail. I glance to where the girl of my destiny is sitting and watch in utter helplessness as the puddle grows and seethes towards her unsuspecting hand. Suddenly time slows. The puddle reaches her hand. It slowly envelops her fingertips and then moves down her hand like a plague of social isolation. 
She looks down and jerks her hand away in shock as realization bursts over her like my recently bursting bladder. And then she looks at me, her face riddled with a mixture of disgust and surprise. My face turned so red that had I been in a pool of strawberries, my classmates would have seen nothing but a shirt and a smelly pair of pour-out-the-water pants. After what felt like a decade, story time ended. I run to my seat, thinking I can avoid the stairs as well as the discovery my act if I acted in haste. Sliding into my chair with greater ease than usual, I stared in horror at Mrs. Crook, who has just noticed my liquid displeasure all over the floor. She began to go around each of our tables asking all students to stand. While the others had no idea why, I felt like a fish out of warm water as I stood there with blantant guilt painted all over my beet red face. As she came to our table, I resigned myself to my fate. Curiously, she passes by me without a word and has us all sit back down. I'm free, I thought. She has no idea. Little did I know she was just being extraordinarily compassionate. She waited a few moments, called me to her desk, and then went with me to call my mom. Distraught, I went to pick up my replacement trousers. The ultimate crushing of my five-year-old self-esteem came when I returned to class to find that it was nap time. I quickly grabbed my mat and began searching for my love, thinking I could explain it all. I found something I would have never expected. There on the floor with the love of my life, my best friend Trey had taken the spot next to her, and they were talking. My hopes, dreams, and thoughts of social leadership were truly and utterly crushed. Story 26 when I was in sixth grade, I was really good friends with a girl who was kind of a social outcast. I didn't understand why. There was nothing wrong with her. She was super smart, friendly, gregarious, and cute. She had an adorably gigantic mop of curly brown hair and glasses perched on a pointed nose. She had big round brown eyes and an earnest smile. She liked the outdoors and animals and liked to wear boots to go trudging through the marshes looking for frogs. One time she and I were at a week-long nature camp with our class and she was dragging me through the swamps in our free time to get closer to some geese. She held me by the hand the whole way. It was nice. But when I went back to the camp to eat, I was stopped by a popular girl I sort of knew. This popular girl, who was a little older and more developed physically than the rest of us, led me aside and smacked me in the forehead. What do you think you're doing? You can't hang out with Nicole? She's a sapphic. You're ruining your reputation for some weird sapphic girl who talks to ducks. Stop holding her hand. I didn't even really understand lesbianism at the time. I didn't know what to do, but I was scared that people wouldn't like me. So I found Nicole and interrupted her invitation to eat dinner with her by saying, I've heard some things about you and I just don't think. I don't think I can trust you anymore or be your friend. She looked at me for a minute and said, okay. If you don't think you can be my friend, you don't have to be. She turned on her heel and ran. I didn't try to stop her. The popular girl put a hand on my shoulder and said I'd done the right thing. That was the second to last week of sixth grade. I didn't see her the next week, or ever again after that, ever. What I wish I'd understood then was that I liked holding her hand as much as she liked holding mine. I remember what it felt like. It was soft, cool, long, and milky white. I liked walking through mud with her and watching the geese and frogs. I liked her boots and her big hair. I liked her a lot, really. We were just kids. But if I'd known then what I know now about myself, I'd have punched that Sabrina girl square in the face and run back to my girl and asked her to be my first girlfriend. It's been 12 years during which time I've dated both men and women and mostly forgiven myself for being a jerk, but I still wish I could tell her I'm sorry. Eat it. Oh my goodness, Reddit gold. Means a lot to me as I'd assume this story wouldn't be read by many and I'm still relatively new around here. Thank you so much for all your kind words and such. And to clarify, yes, I'm a woman. I was worried that this might be received as super cheesy, and by some it was, and I'm sorry for that. Just kind of how I think, this memory makes me legitimately sad. And I have tried to find her since, but I can't. And I don't want to bother her either after so long. But you know, I wish I'd been smarter back then. Story 27. I was at work one day, pool guy. And I had my earbuds in and was vacuuming a customer's pool. In my peripheral, I noticed someone walk info the backyard. I spun around and it was the customer, who is a nice mid-thirties professional, who happens to be boy. He greeted me, good morning, how are you? The combination of being surprised, mildly stoned, and trying to form a sentence while talk radio was being pumped through an earbud into my right ear, caused what I wanted to say, which was, hey there, pretty good. You? To come out as, hey there, pretty guy, you good? He just stood there for a second, laughed, and said, yeah, pretty guy, I'm good before walking in the house. Story 28. 
This happened when I was 14. 15, so about 20 years ago, and still keeps me up at night sometimes. I went to lunch with my mates at school, and they were ahead of me in the queue. So when I was finished paying, I look over to see where they have sat down, and it's a table with four girls from the year above us. Small canteen, you just sit wherever there is a free spot. However, there are only two of my mates with me, and they've both sat a seat apart from the girls, so I'm going to be sat next to one of them anyway. Now I was a shy, nerdy kid, and still am as an adult, so it was all rather awkward as each group had whispered conversations on polite topics you only really talk about when you think others can overhear you. So I'm about halfway through my meal, and the girls are just about finished, when I feel something brush my leg. Then it happens again but this time it becomes clear that it's not accidental, and someone is gently caressing my leg under the table with theirs. I immediately tense up, as my young brain doesn't know how to respond to this action. I look at my mates, and they don't seem to have any clue that anything is going on, and at that point, the girls get up to leave, and the girl next to me, Lindsay, leans over and says bye in my ear. Within two seconds, my face is as red as it has ever been, as Lindsay is an attractive older girl, and frankly way out of my league, and my mates are just catching on that something is unusual as I sit there in disbelief as to what happened, but once the girls are out of earshot, I blurt it out to them. Over the rest of the lunch break, and for probably a few days after that, we discuss the incident and come to the conclusion that it was probably just a joke but I get the distinct impression they are skeptical that it happened at all. I don't really see Lindsay around school for probably about a week or so after that. The bell has sounded so, I'm on my way to afternoon registration on the second floor, when as I come up up the last set of stairs, I see Lindsay looking back at me and apparently waiting for me. She looks at me with a shy smile and says, Hi, how are you? I in turn stop dead and stare blankly at her for what seems like about three hours, but was just seconds as I was shy, and my adolescent brain struggled to formulate any kind of response. Several people move around me as I stood frozen in the middle of the stairs looking at her before my brain decided that the best solution to this would be to make a noise that resembled no word in the English language, probably as most of the blood in my body was now rushing to my face, and then engage flight mode and get to the classroom as soon as possible. I still remember the look of disappointment on her face as I ran off, and the deal was truly sealed by the much younger kid who was now walking next to me who asked me why I didn't just talk to her. I don't think I saw her around school after that, but my brain likes to rerun this incident whenever I'm having trouble sleeping, and I still wonder what might have happened if I wasn't such a shy inept. Story 29. I've told this story before but it's worth repeating because I'm getting embarrassed just thinking about it, and it's been 20 years. When I was 12 or 13, I was at a dance workshop with an attractive male teacher who happened to be boy. At some point, he mentioned how he was bloated from eating too much salt. I imagined someone just eating straight salt and thought it was funny, so I laughed and pretended to shake salt into my mouth. Everyone stared at me in horror as I mimed shaking salt into my mouth, laughing away not realizing that it looked like I was miming a blowjob. It wasn't until after I got home that I realized what I had done and why the attractive boy dancer was so cold to me for the rest of class. Story 30. Sixth grade, I had a huge crush on this girl. Let's call her Bella. I really wanted to find out if she liked me, but I didn't dare risk shame by asking her at school. So I worked up the courage one evening to call her. I had the brilliant idea to mimic the voice of her best friend Haley. That way she would tell me the truth and no rejection. Brilliant. Then as the phone was ringing, it suddenly occurred to me that her friend might be at her house. They were pretty inseparable. That would wreck the whole thing. Hello? In falsetto? Hi, Bella. Hi, who is this? Uh, is Haley there? No. At this point it occurs to me that I can't pretend to be Haley after asking if she's asterisk there asterisk. Uh, wrong number. Bye. Yes, still in falsetto. Maybe I imagined it, but I'm pretty sure she looked at me funny at school. Fortunately, no one ever found out. Definitely still cringe about it. Story 31. When I was much younger, there was what I assume a homeless man, helping people to their cars and carrying things out of a key food supermarket for tips. It was a boiling hot day, so we had a few half-full soda bottles on the curb near the entrance of the supermarket. And like the little mischievous kid that I was, I thought it would be fun to jump on them and watch the liquid spray out. I had no idea that they were his bottles, I saw him earlier, but did not put two and two together. All three bottles I jumped on exploded. When the man came back, he wasn't even man, just disappointed and sad, that is what terminated me. As a young kid, I didn't even have any money to pay for them. 
An hour later, I told my mom when I got home, and she angrily drove me back to buy him a bunch of drinks, but he was gone. Looking back, I do like that I absolutely knew I was wrong, and would have never done it if I knew they were not just abandoned bottles. Story 32. I was 12 years old, and it was my first year on the neighborhood swim team. I was at a meet, and we were all lined up ready to swim a 50-meter backstroke. I don't know what it was. The feeling of the summer air on my bare thighs and my Speedo, the cute girls who were on my team, or just insane 12-year-old boy hormones. But I got a raging erection. Red-faced and embarrassed, I approached the pool hunched over like an old woman with osteoporosis. As I jumped into the pool, I could feel everyone's eyes on me. After the whistle blew, I began swimming backstroke, and when I looked down, my 12-year-old boner was cutting the surface of the water, sticking straight up like a mast on a ship. From then on, I was known on the swim team as the sailboat TLDR, got raging erection on swim team in a speedo, and had to swim backstroke edit. Awful grammar. Story 33. I'm a girl for reference. Okay, so... When I was a kid, my mom, brother, and I had gone out to eat at a burger joint type of place with coin machines that had toys in them. I noticed them and asked my brother, who is ten years older than me, for some quarters to get a bouncy ball. I got two and we left, cut to the car ride home. I'm sitting in the back, and out of the blue I just go, look at these balls. They are so big. My mom and brother started cracking up, but I didn't get it, so I kept going. But what's funny? They are just balls. Big blue balls. At this point, they were practically crying, and my mom almost pulled over because she was laughing so hard. Mama, what's wrong? I'm just playing with my balls. What's funny about balls? I was ten. They still tease me. Story 34. I was on the bus making my way back to campus when a cute girl sat next to me. Being new to the city, new to college, and being a pretty shy guy, I somehow summed up the courage to talk to her. I pull out my headphones and notice she's drinking a smoothie from Orange Julius. Awkwardness ensues. Hey, so how is that smoothie? Pretty good, she replies. What's in it? Banana and carrot, she says as she continues staring straight ahead. Huh, that's interesting. I'll have to try one sometime. Do you go to the college? Yep. So, uh, who's your favorite teacher? What was I thinking? I don't really have any favorites yet. Me either. I know I don't like math. My teacher is from Europe and hard to understand. A long, awkward pause ensues. I put my headphones back in and stared out the window in shame. I really hope nobody was listening to my smooth moves that day. Story 35. I have a bunch, but my biggest one physically hurts instead of making me cringe. It's one of my darker secrets. When I was little, my mom wad trying to divorce my dad because she was on sweets. She wanted to be with some guy that I hated from the very beginning. Well, one night, a night before Mardi Gras, she had me spend the night with him because she wanted to go party, and I was molested. I was traumatized and shut myself off and even stopped talking for years. I regret never telling anyone until ten years after it happened. Now no one but my family will believe me, and I can no longer press charges. Story 36. When my dad had a near-fatal heart attack at my home when I was 17, that instead of going to see him right away, I took a shower because I still had bedhead. I mean, I could have lost my hero that day, and all I cared about was how my hair looked. My dad eventually succumbed to another heart attack seven years later, but the silver lining of sorts was that I was the last one to see him alive and my final words to him were, I love you. He then got in his car and passed away about ten minutes later, no accident as he had time to pull over. That's one of my best memories, by the way. And my dad was the greatest man I have ever known. Story 37. When I first started college, I was still struggling to understand my identity. I had grown up in a very small rural town where the population was very homogenous. The only religions I had really had exposure to were Christianity and Judaism. For a long time, I had become very attached to Christianity because it helped me temporarily find a way to cover the identity I had that I was most scared of, being boy. In college, these feelings were coming to a head. I was finally starting to be okay with being boy and was slowly drifting away from my religious views. However, there was a peaking point where I was struggling somewhere in the middle, and where I had met someone very religious, Christian. We were wandering around campus and were given copies of the Book of Mormon by some Mormon missionaries. We discussed how stupid Mormon faith was, and she suggested we throw the books in the nearby fountain. Unbeknownst to us, the missionaries had looped back and saw us right as we threw them into this huge fountain. One of them ran into the fountain and grabbed it, getting soaking wet, and yelled at us for being disrespectful, 
asking how we would feel if someone had done that to a Bible. These days I identify as atheist and think most religion is frequently problematic, but I still think that was probably one of the most horribly disrespectful things I've ever done. I should never have taken the book in the first place, let alone done something that stupid with it. While I have a lot of regret over the memory, it did teach me about how it feels to be disrespected in that way, and that no one deserves to be treated that way, ever. Story 38. I was probably 19 or so, not that young and stupid at least, and went with my mom to a big family lunch with very distant and old relatives, most of which were of direct Italian descent or were actually from Italy and recalled when they were kids and ecapped the war. As a way of introducing us new generation, someone had the brilliant idea to make us stand in front of the whole family and introduce us briefly. I always have had a bit of a public speaking phobia and react erratically. So my turn comes, and my mom says that I'm always very funny and should tell some joke to break the ice. So I figure I'll try to do something funny. Stand up. Extend my right arm with my palm straightened and scream, Heil Hitler. Story 39. Wife and I were experimenting with wife sharing, cuckolding, a fetish I developed living in the same apartment for a year after a break while dating several years prior. We've done a few as a couple at this point, but it was the first time she'd be going solo, and with an ex from during the break we'd be meeting with. She was going to call me throughout the date. I decide to call my best bud for beers. He has no idea about my wife meeting up with others, or even that I'm into her being with other guys. She calls a few times and left it at she's about to go to his place. I was drinking more than usual, and after too many drinks I realized she was about to get banged by a guy I despised and I was in the same place with the same bud while this was happening during break. I have a breakdown in front of my friend and all I say is she's sucking his banana. Over and over. My buddy walks me out and gives me a ride home. I explain to him everything. She calls on the ride and tells me what she's wearing. I tell her to leave the phone on. I put her on speakerphone. Drunk logic, I thought I was proving something. Anyway, we get in, and my buddy sees I'm a mess and waits with me. He never looked at me and my wife the same. Everything was different. Every time after that, the instant I looked at him, I would think of that night I broke down and suck it up. Story 40. My family, more specifically my dad, has a tie to Jordanian royal family. They came over from Jordan one year when I was around 11, 12. We went to the Ritz-Carlton with the king, queen, princess, and were sitting at a corner table. The waiter brought by a four-tiered tray with little square sandwiches on them. Me being an ignorant bum at the time, grabbed a sandwich whilst the others were talking. I took it in my hand, took a bite, made a repulsed face and spit it back into my plate and put the plate on the table. I couldn't draw you a more appalled look from my mother, my sister, my father, the queen, the king, and the princess. I was clueless. Looking back, I shudder at this memory. Story 41. I was at a show seeing great live music while high on MDMA. I was outside smoking a cane, and I saw a guy I hung out with a few times over the summer, so I started talking to him. He didn't recognize me at first because I only saw him at a few parties. But he remembered me after I told him that I was Demetrius' ex-girlfriend, that is, one of his friends. He remembered me then. Well, the sweets were hitting me really hard, and I just felt so good that I told him he was really handsome and stuff. I did think he was really freaking cute, even when I dated his friend. Dumb. He didn't respond very well, and we both kind of just stood there when his two friends came up. I didn't have anything with me besides my ID and money, and didn't even think that I didn't have my cell phone with me. So I ask if I can get his number. He goes, yay, yeah, sure, and looks at me like I had a cell phone or something. Dumb! I looked at him surprised, and realized that I didn't have it. His friend then starts sarcastically saying, ooh, can I have your number? I go, I don't have my phone, um. So then he awkwardly put my number in his phone. I walked away in shame. He never called. I saw him again at the local watering hole on 420ths, and I asked if he wanted to come with my friends and I to breathe a bowl. We were passing him, and I just tossed it at him, not thinking he would accept the invitation. So he joined, and once we all got in the car, it felt really awkward. After a few minutes of me fumbling in the dark, he said, Hey, I'll be right back, guys, and left. He never came back. I really hope I never run into him again. This all doesn't sound as bad typed out, but the actual situations are painful to think about for some reason. Story 42. Sophomore year of college, one of my best friends became roommates with this really, really cute guy, probably totally out of my league. But I used to sleep over on the love seat, which was too small, and one night he offered to let me sleep in his bed. I should preface this by saying, I am really not that experienced with casual hookups, and I was even less so in college, so I had no clue what to do. 
I have always been a tomboy or one of the guys, so I never knew how to approach a guy once I did have a crush. In this situation, I was almost paralyzed by fear because I thought he was so hot. We started making out hot and heavy. To this day, he is the second best kisser I have ever kissed. His shirt came off, totally chiseled bod, and then he started to work his hands down my pants to grab my peach, and when he did, I farted. I was so mortified, I instantly pretended to fall asleep. Story 43. Oh, God, there are so many. But probably the worst is what happened in grade eight, when the boy I liked asked me to be his girlfriend. We had gone, as a grade, to a local park to have a water balloon fight. After the fight, we were hanging out by the swings, enjoying our freezies. Alex, the boy I liked, was talking to me and TJ, the nerdy guy who had a crush on me but was too awkward to talk to me, was hanging out nearby, listening, now I'm watching. So Alex asked me out, and I say I would really like that TJ. It was mortifying, and I was surely beat red. TJ enjoyed that, and I was teased for the remainder of the year. It all seems really silly now, but at the time, it was the worst thing to ever happen to me. I still cringe thinking about it.